tell us about the statistics that you have which tell us about the effectiveness of the program. Well, the curriculum is pretty much based on my experience as a youth, and I would be considered a trouble youth when I was growing up. I didn't trust people, and I didn't understand why they wanted to impose their values on me. So the reason this curriculum is written in a deductive format, as Joska's alluded to, is so the students can make up their own minds based on the information that we give them. And we're finding students making excellent decisions when they have the right information to make those decisions with. So really it's so successful because it becomes their decisions, not our decisions. Yeah, and I think we should add to that that we do not um, use a judgment that this is right or this is wrong. We never say that, ever. So it's not an opinion either. It's like this is the consequences of going down this path, and there's plenty of history to back that up. And this is the, historically, this is what happens when you go down this path. So there's not much opinion to it. It's a, what path do you want to live on? Our curriculum, because it paints a clear path of righteousness or life in Christ or a path that's not righteousness and all those consequences, when children decide this is the path they want to live on, it becomes their values, their principles. They defend them and stand by them. And then it becomes positive peer pressure to live this way. So it's tremendous the impact it has. Dramatic reductions in teenage pregnancies, gang participation, truancy, substance abuse, I can you imagine that separation of church and state allows us to deliver the gospel in schools, the Catholic evangelicals, and a broad spectrum of the whole political from left to right is all agreeing with it? It must be doing a good job. One of the most interesting statistics we have from the government is in 2004, they did a study of 80,000 co-ed high school students. It was the first year we went into that school district. And as a result, they told us 2,500 girls less were pregnant that year. So there was, uh, between abortions and little kids born with no daddies and girls dropping out of school, there was 2,500 less in a study group of 80,000 co-ed students. So I don't know what the girl to boy ratio was, but even if it was 50-50, that means 40,000 girls, 2,500 less pregnancies, that's huge. It was so big as a matter of fact that the Congress of Bolivia changed the law. For the first time in the history of that country, they accredited a curriculum. They licensed us to operate in a public school system. And additionally, there was an executive order that no school could say no to a presentation. We're the only education program in Bolivia that's accredited. So we have an absolute monopoly. There's no other curriculum, reading, writing, arithmetic, history, social study, none of it's accredited at national level except for our program. Everything we do is certified by government. The interesting thing is I was talking to the Secretary of State for the Dominican Republic. He leans over his desk and tells me, we don't want our schools to look like your schools. We want God in our schools. I'm in Chile and this, a senator in Chile tells me, we don't want our kids killing each other like in America. We want God in school. So El Salvador said they want more Jesus and scripture in the books because they don't want to be like the United States. You know what, Bill? We're coming to America. We're building up a case study in Latin America that's so powerful, they can't say no. And I'm looking forward to the day when we're teaching Jesus Christ in school as powerful we're doing it in Latin America. But we have to be wise. I understand that the curriculum, the textbooks, have the gospel in them, but it sounds like you're also discipling the students. Yeah, this is a discipleship program in public school. The, the evangelical aspect of it is just part, you know, just part of it. I mean, winning a child to Jesus is a quick thing, but training them up in the Word of God, now that's the power. The situation is that somewhere down the line, governments are waking up that education is not working. There's more young girls pregnant. There's more kids on drugs and alcohol. There's more children dropping out of school. There's more violence and killing in schools than ever before. Somewhere we have lost the effectiveness of our education system. 
Well, and, because if you have all this disobedience and rebellion in school, you can't get an education. And not only that, those schoolrooms down there is about 30 to 40 students in a classroom. So when everything is out of order and out of right, what do the children learn? And if there's not a purpose and a, and a clear instruction that education has to do with making you an individual that is ready to face society and its dangers and challenges, and at the same time be able to express who you are with power and confidence, mm -hmm. uh, impacting and bringing change to your environment. I understand that you also train the teachers, not only put the curriculum into the hands of the students, but put the teachers through a certification process. We are a program. We have the 13 textbooks to give to each grade level, mm -hmm. but what you don't see is we have training sessions for the teachers, training the teachers, preparing them to use this curriculum. To be certified in the curriculum. And certified by, the, by us, and we are certified by the government to do so, so the teachers increase their pay by attending our courses. So the government contracts us to train parents, giving them a godly strategy to raise their children. We certify teachers in the use of the program, and then every student gets a textbook. Every textbook on the very last page has a prayer and plan of salvation, has Romans 10, 9, and 10, where it quotes, you know, confess with your heart, uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. We quote Billy Graham and the Pope, both of which say that kids need Jesus. I've stood before 30,000 teachers to this date. Only one has opposed me for teaching it. People are looking for truth. People are looking for answers on how to help children become successful and powerful in life. If you were to speak uh, to a Spanish-speaking person listening to this video, can you speak in Spanish? Something you said. Como no, hermano, somos allá por algunos años. <laughs> y, 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 y también cuando habla castellano debe mover sus manos también, ¿verdad? <laughs> bueno, nosotros vivimos, ya hemos vivido uh, 17 años en Bolivia y 4 años en Honduras. Entonces nosotros estamos... Y antes en... yo era un capitán de barcos también. Entonces hablamos español y um, atendemos, entrenamos a los maestros en español, a los alumnos y los padres de familia. Entonces somos media latinos. Bueno. bueno. <laughs>